Good evening and welcome to our premiere night. And I'm so excited to the Smith County Fine Arts Center slash theater. Um, this one is special because it's the Christmas season. So I wanted to do something that um, that brought the community together. And I hope that you were really impressed with the people downstairs and the food and how they were dressed. We tried to recreate 1943. And that was the... Uh, to me, the, the lost generation now, the, we tried to make that atmosphere downstairs when, when you came in the door, that you would be impressed. That that's the way it was back in the 1940s. It's not like it is today, but that, that's what we hope to do with the community theater because that's what it's all about. And in the future, we'll have auditions for new shows coming up. Um, I'll be the director, and uh, we'll, we plan on doing one in the spring. And this is going to be our temporary location. Hopefully, we'll find a bigger place. Yes, this is a temporary location, and uh, we're trying to make it as comfortable as possible. We painted downstairs, made it, uh, dressed it up a little bit. It doesn't look like that tacky government building it looked like in the past. And we changed that gray color to a pretty gold color and uh, tried to make it look more what the outside looks like. Because, y'all, I mean, when you go down Main Street, this courthouse is probably one of the, the prettiest courthouses in the south. Inside was a disappointment. To, that's my opinion. Okay, uh, so we try. We're trying to make it look better and make it look more pleasing that people want to come out and see this place and see our place. And when you think about a courthouse, you think about it the center of activity for the entire county. And in this production tonight, when we when we pick the people for the show, that we try to incorporate people from all over the county. And with us tonight, we have the inspiration behind our musical tonight and I'm gonna let Miss Teresa Bush introduce them. Thank you Bill. I have some kind of something going on so y'all bear with me and I wrote my notes so I wouldn't forget. In 2009 I wrote a series of stories in the Carthage Courier featuring World War II veterans here in Wilson County. The column was called Visions of Smith County. I hope y'all remember those. Scott Winfrey asked me to go interview uh, Ivy Campbell, A.G. Jr., Sergeant. And I had met him a few years before at the church, Gornsville United Methodist Church, because that's where my sister goes. So I knew him, I knew Miss Virginia, and I knew Miss Lucille. Nobody in my family was ever in World War II, so I really had no idea what I, I was going to hear. I was a reporter. I had my reporter face on and I had a job to do and that's what I was going to do. It was simple for me. But my attitude changed very quickly. I cried as I sat on the couch in their house and listened to him recount his role in the invasion of Normandy, France that happened on June 6, 1944. I left there with a very different attitude a heart full of gratitude, a newfound respect for soldiers like him who fought Hitler. He was only 19 years old, y'all. He'd married the love of his life about a year before on that June 6, 1944. He was in the 29th Infantry Division. He was among the first wave of troops that went across those choppy waters of the English Channel on the wee hours of that morning to liberate France. He was in a jeep that had been modified because they knew they were going to get in the water. And because he was a forward observer, which is just what it says, he was to go forward and observe and communicate back. His jeep was on the front of one of those rhino ferries. And when it rolled up onto the Omaha Beach, one of six locations, the Germans were shooting the crap out of him. He found himself in just minutes, not ankle deep in water, but in water up to his nose. The man literally was driving the Jeep like this, with a hand on the wheel and a hand on the choke, doing what he was trained to do. If I remember correctly, your partner jumped out very quickly. He was scared. He jumped out. Ivy kept going. There is no way we will ever feel or see or know what he felt that day. The closest that we can ever come 
is to go watch the first 25 minutes of the 1998 movie Saving Private Ryan. The first 25 minutes of that movie is depicting Omaha Beach and this man was there. It features the 29th Infantry of which he is a proud member. There's no way that we can really find enough words in the English language, I think, to thank you for what you do, what you did. But y'all, words are all we have. So thank you for what you did. <laughs> the scenes in that movie are so incredibly powerful. Experts and veterans say it's the most accurate depiction ever. And as a nosy little reporter, I ask him that day, have you seen Private Ryan? And oh, he quickly said, no, I have not, Teresa. I don't want to. I don't have to. Because I lived it. And you did. Okay, now let's be happy. When Bill came to me and he said he wanted this musical to feature someone who had been a World War II veteran, I knew exactly who it was going to be and that it was going to be my friend Sergeant Agee. So when I went over to his house and talked to him and Miss Virginia and asked them about it, they're like, yeah, that sounds like so much fun. I said, now you're a singer and a dancer and all that. He said, I don't care. Anytime we can bring attention to what we did in World War II, that's really cool. So when I was talking to Miss Virginia and Mr. Ivy, I said, there's a scene in there where a little girl is going to be decorating a tree. Do you have any idea who we could let that be? Maybe a niece or a neighbor and Miss Virginia got some tears in her eyes and she said, Teresa, can it be Ann Eastus? You know she passed away a little while ago and I thought, yes I do, but I don't get the connection. She said, she was my flower girl in our wedding. So she very well could have been over here decorating a tree, so I said, all right, we'll do that. So we got Lucille in the show, we got Ann Eastus in the show, we got Miss Virginia in the show, and we have Mr. Ivy in the show. And the final thing I want to say is this, he's one of the most decorated soldiers around. I have it on your program what he has been honored, but please let me say them. The highest honor the French can give is called the French Legion of Honor, and he has one. He has a silver star, a bronze star, good conduct. I'm not French speaking, but the French Croix de Guerre, Cross of War with Palm. European, African, Middle Eastern Campaign, World War II Victory Army of Occupation, and the Army Presidential Citation. Once again, y'all, please clap for Sergeant Ivy C. Agee, 29th Infantry, Battery B, and the 111th Field Artillery, and I'm proud to call you my friend. Bill's going to shoot me, but I, I forgot one more thing, because I do want you to know. When I went to them, they said, Teresa, I have his uniform. Would that Jason Robert Smith you were telling me about love to wear his uniform? I went, Lord, how mercy, how sweet of you to say that. But no offense, Jason Robert's bigger than you. <laughs> So that went out the window, and, and they said, what can we do to, to lend something authentic? So tonight, when Ann Eastis, Grace Harville, goes over to the window to shut the curtains for the blackout, and then open the curtains for the blackout, please pay particular attention to the star. It's a silk star, and every family who had a loved one in World War II proudly displayed that in their window. Jennifer, get a picture of it. And that is what we have exactly for you tonight. So again, thank you all for being here and thank you for indulging me to talk. In writing the show, Teresa, Teresa and I co-wrote the show and we did kind of take some artistic freedom on, and I told Mr. Agee this, uh, his role is Bob Hope in the show. So, uh, Bob Hope type character to make the story flow okay you'll see what I'm talking about later but uh, and um, he's okay with that so that's the only thing really we changed uh, we uh, the 
when we mentioned the Main Street, how it was back in the 1940s, uh, the Princess Theater, those of you remember that. I wish we'd put Santa Claus waving in Reed Brothers Drug Store, but I for <laughs> we forgot that. Um, but there are a lot of things, a lot of memories that we can, you know, bring to the show. We just didn't have time to do it. But we maybe next year we can add more part two of Smith County in the war years. Thank you all for coming out tonight. Enjoy the show. And Merry Christmas.